Welcome back to episode 10 of season 1 for Project Life Goal. Today I am putting the skin on the horizontal stabilizer and then match drilling the inboard ribs. Let's go ahead and take a look. Starting up right where we left off from the last episode, I am finishing the seaming and fluting. That jig isn't able to reach the flanges and the nose of each rib, so those still have to be done manually. And I double checked that all the flanges were the proper angle and made small adjustments where required during the process. I got fairly fortunate, a majority of my ribs uh, were fairly straight so they did not require a large amount of adjustment. Some of them had a slight twist in it, which Van says that there's not a whole lot that you can really do about that. Here on the inboard nose rib, I am preparing to drill two holes in the flange that will connect it to the forward spar assembly. Now of all of my ribs gathered, I begin to reassemble the front uh, spar assembly in preparation for adding on the rear spar assembly and all of the ribs to make up the skeleton of the horizontal stabilizer. I made the decision to attempt to add it on the skins with the horizontal stabilizer as one unit, uh, which is a slight deviation from the plans. The plans do say to do them one side at a time, left and then right. I thought I might be able to uh, save myself a little bit of time uh, by not having to completely disassemble the rear spar and having to work with it in two separate pieces and then bring them back together later on. Uh, in hindsight, now having done that, I would say definitely stick with doing them one side at a time. When you start to add in all the, the weight of those Clecos and the size of the horizontal stabilizer, it becomes a bit cumbersome to work with. And also, the, that the weight of those Clecos kind of distort things a little bit. There's a lot of tension that's built up uh, in the skin as it wraps around the nose of the ribs and that can be difficult to work with. So I will be making some forms to actually hold that skin tight to make the final assembly process easier on myself and reduce the risk of damaging a part. So it was right about here that I was realizing a cradle to hold this uh, upside down from the perspective that I have it now would have definitely made the process a lot easier. I will. The ease at which the vertical stabilizer went together for me as far as the skin goes kind of fooled me when it came time for the horizontal stabilizer. So if you don't already have forms that uh, match the shape of the horizontal stabilizer. I would say at minimum making a cradle as many builders do uh, would be advisable. Even something as simple as uh, just webbing between two posts if you will to, to help hold the skin in a little bit for you uh, would have made the process a, a lot easier. But it did come together uh, thankfully without any major issues. Now this skin here gave me a lot more trouble than the first one. Um, the rib on the outside edge didn't quite want to line up and that's when I discovered it was really kind of the, the weight of those Clecos that were impacting things. So I fought that for a bit and tried using blocks of wood here and there to, to compensate for the added weight of the Clecos. It was, a, it was definitely a challenge, but as I said, we, we did get through and it turned out okay and it all went together fine in the end. But that is another reason to have a cradle of some type is you won't have to deal with the, the blocking of wood like I did here. Lesson learned for next time when I build the second airplane. And this is about the time where I started to get really excited because I realized that I had a 
component to an actual airplane. Um, obviously, I'd already seen the vertical stabilizer, but this horizontal stabilizer really gives you a, a scale to go by for how big this plane actually is. You know, we're, we're building a full-size plane, and that's an exciting feeling in this build process. Here I am adding in uh, HS5 and 6, omitting those zeros so we can match drill through the skin into those ribs. I was doing both sides at the same time just to kind of stay uniform, stay in the same step along the, the process, but I don't have enough Clico clamps to uh, actually do that, so I switched to doing just one side at a time. I saved the seaming of the forward and aft flanges on the ribs till this stage since the spars are at different angles from each other. And with that we'll go ahead and wrap up guys. This was a very productive weekend for me. Unfortunately I don't have footage of everything as the camera actually did eventually run out of battery since I didn't have it plugged in the whole time while recording. But here's some real-time footage for you as I do the match drilling for those inboard ribs. Where we're at right now, we've got 26 hours of build time for a total of 35 hours project time and then 53 hours once you add in the video editing. Definitely learned a lot of lessons on this one. I'm glad that I started with the vertical stabilizer. I think if I had started off with the horizontal stabilizer, I might have been a little disheartened uh, with the challenges that certainly come with it. But Having gained those skills from the vertical stabilizer, uh, it was a good progression. I'm looking forward to the challenges that I know are coming with the elevator and rudder. So I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, dimpled and deburred uh, and primed, and then we'll still be waiting for that rivet gun to show up. Hopefully the um, situation that's going on right now will be resolved and we'll be back to a somewhat normal life here again shortly. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. If you want to keep following along, subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell to receive alerts every time I post a new video. And with that, I thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment below for any questions or suggestions that you have, and I'll see you next time. Take care.